Okay, our participants are now loading up. Okay, we've over 100 people online now, um, so we might get going. Um, welcome everyone to week four of the Art of the Mating. This week we're dealing with National Hunt. We couldn't have a better panel to do so. We have Eddie O'Leary, Peter Maloney and Jane Mangan, and we're going to be talking through how you breed Cheltenham winner. We were just talking before, it might be easier to breed a winner of the uh, Cheltenham charity race. The task we've, tonight is very challenging, but we're going to give it a go. And what better way to do so than with the three amazing mares we're going to we're going to discuss mating: apples, jade, honeysuckle, and Benny de Deux. So um, our briefing is pretty simple. We have a uh, breeder coming into the game has been enthused by what the Irish Turber Breeders Association have been doing. The Turber Breeders Association in the UK, and that's helping national hunt mares. And he wants to go out, buy the best mares he can, and breed them. Um, and that's it's fairly simple. It's an unlimited budget, which makes things life a lot easier than the real world. But it is virtual cash, and I think we can uh, treat ourselves to that luxury uh, while, while we can do so during these strange times. So our first mayor um, of this week is going to be Apple's Jade. But before we do, I suppose, Jane, when you had a look at this um, briefing, what, what kind of jumped out to you at the challenges of breeding a, a top-class national hunt horse? Well, the brief kind of suggests you're trying to breed uh, a winner for Cheltenham Festival. So I have no idea how to do that because I've never done it. So I said I'd take a little bit of a closer look. And in the last five years, I think this year, 24 sires had winners at the festival. Last year, 26. And I think in 2018, there's 28 races run at the festival and there's 28 different winning sires. So unlike the flat where you have a dominance of maybe Galileo Dubawi, or a son of theirs. On, on the jumping sphere, it's much more wide open. Yes, there's commercial stallions that when you go to the sales, the door will open, but there are stallions where you mightn't even consider them. They're on the list of, as having bred plenty of Jelton winners. Milan and Cave Tower in the last five years have both bred five winners at the festival. Muta is here, uh, obviously with the help of Pasha de Polder and in violin. He's had four, as has Westerner. Cal Nisi, Shantu, Court Cave, Box Boom, Walking Back, they've all had three in the last five years. And I would consider each one of them to have had ample opportunity to do so. So when you're looking at mares like this, Apples, Jade, they, these mares merit the best. They're, they're, they're first mating and you want to have a horse that's proven. So while there's a lot of flashy first season options, I think we're... Gonna, I'm going to give these three mares the best opportunity with proven horses and essentially what the best market offers we, we'll give them those those stallions. And Eddie you've, you've been about involved in countless Cheltenham winners when you and you're entering the you know the Derby sale catalogue came out dur during the week the Land Rover won't be far behind it when you're picking up that catalogue and you're looking at Ireland's best national hunt breeders and you're trying to think what would I buy to win at Cheltenham what, what are the things that you repeatedly go back to over and over again? Well, I'd say, I'd say um, on, on the flat, um, pedigree means far, far more. On, as the jumping horse, the, the, physical, the physical horse means so much more, or it means much the pedigree. And it's the, it's the athlete you want to buy and hope that hold the pedigree there to carry it through. But I'd be going for an individual as a jumping horse over pedigree. Uh, and Peter, a, a question for you. If you look back to the 20th century and you read Tessio and he says, you know, jumping is not an inheritable characteristic. For you, is it something that's passed on? Is it, do you see families that are just naturally good jumpers? Or how, what, what would, you, uh, would your approach be? Oh, yes. I mean, you know, a lot of the, obviously the old established jumping pedigrees are the old established jumping pedigrees for a reason. Um, the, the, you know, some people say that certain sires can't get jumpers and their their stock can't jump and 
Um, I'm not. I'm not necessarily of the uh, of the of that opinion. I think um, um, most horses can jump, and horses can, you know, with the likes of Yogi Breisner and these guys, uh, jumping can be improved with schooling and uh, um, you know a lot of a lot of horses from lots of different um, lots of different uh, sources end up being good jumpers. And Eddie, when, when you started off buying for Gigastown, you were assembling, you know, the, the arsenal, the amazing arsenal that you've had over the last, you know, couple of decades. And you initially didn't really buy National Hunt mares as much as you, you did in the latter part of that process. Was there a reason for the switch in kind of, in thinking that you started to buy more National Hunt mares? I'd say for the, I'd say for the, first, the first seven or eight years, we, had no, we bought no mare. We had no mare racing. And then the ITBA brought in the, 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 the mare scheme and... If we had, we had to have mares to qualify for that, so we, we started buying a few mares then. So it's purely because of the ITBA and the and the mares, the mares scheme, which has got bigger and better and better, that mares now make a lot more sense to race. And Jane, would you describe what is that mare scheme? What how does it how does it work, and why should breeders get involved in it? Well, I suppose if you, if you have an Irish bred mare or any mare registered with ITBA, you qualify for a five grand bonus. I actually, have. A couple of mares have not only won an ITBA bumper, but a hurdle and a chase as well. So as well as winning the prize money, that owner is bringing home 15 grand of a bonus extra. It's just an incentive. Essentially, a race is confined to mares only that they get the opportunity to run against their own gender and run for uh, probably a, a bit more prize money as well. I guess okay, the, the ITBA scheme plus, plus the, mare, the mares racing and culminating now there's I think next year there's a there's a two and a half mile mare's chase in Cheltenham. But the whole scheme is, is encouraging you to, to race to breed and race fillies. And do you view the new race as a positive, Eddie? Oh, very much so. Because there's no there's no point encouraging encouraging mares and to have mares bumpers in both Aintree and in Fairy House and everywhere, and then mares hurdles everywhere, but no chase. Like you've got to bring them the whole way through. And and the fact that there's a mare's chase there. Um, over two and a half miles is is is, is it has to be they have to have to bring them through to, to go chasing as well. And Peter, what, you know, when Kenny Alexander came to you and said, you know, I want to have some national hunt mares and I want to expand out a national hunt uh, breeding operation as a result of that, you know, for many people and and this task here is it's the starting point of starting that journey. What would your advice to them be? Where would you start? Oh, listen, um, you know, try you well. You have to buy according to your budget basically so you know um kenny's lucky he's got a fairly decent budget we've been able to buy some very nice mares you know so that make so that's uh if you have a more limited budget um you can buy a, a you know a very well made mare and look you know good confirmation good movement good size and scope um so you know that's that's where I go. Uh, we've been concentrating really on buying form form mares, um, um, point to point winners like Honeysuckle. Um, uh, so and as I say, we've got a fairly decent budget to play with. So we've been lucky. You know, I've been lucky. I'm in a very lucky position. Um, just what I'd like to add to what the other two said about you know the the advantages of uh, of having mares. Um, you know, this year now we had a very nice mare um, uh, called Carrie Deschamp, who at Kenny bred actually, um, and she got a little bit of a leg, um, and probably not race, you know, not raceable again, and um, so a career-ending injury. Um, she's won six. She's small black type. Um, she's from a good family. And, you know, so she, you know, she's still worth something. She's, she's worth a lot of money as a broodmare now. And we have her covered and she's in full. Um, whereas that was a gelding, you know, I'd be looking for a home for him somewhere, you know, for a uh, racehorse to riding or, you know, eventing or something like that. And basically worthless, you know. So that's a huge advantage to have a nice, well, if you have a nice mare. Have a residual value at the end yeah. of the day. Okay, well, here are three mares with remarkable residual values and our first one of the evening is Apple's Jade. Eddie, she's been covered this year and you're sitting down to, to make your mating. You know, what, what were the initial things? When you're thinking about the physical of Apple's Jade, what are you thinking about in terms of stallions? Have you talked about 
when you get to the Derby sale, when you get to the Land Rover, physical is so important in the national hunt. What are you trying to do with your mating for Apple Jade? I think I think as, as I think Jane already said, um, I think it's very important with, with, with young mares that you start off with a proven sire, and if you look around for the for, for the proven sires that I'm knocking about, um, she's a very very good movie mare, which needs all the size all the size she has. Um, like, like she's actually in foal as we speak, so there's no there's no guessing who's going to cover her. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. Well, do you want to reveal who that is? Do you want to reveal uh, walk, the, who, who? Walk, walk walk in the park, who I believe is a top class young stallion. What he's achieved in France and very small crops, if that carries through to his Irish crops, he'll take over the world. And he has size and scope to, to, to suit her. Okay, well, well, that's the uh, that's a stallion brochure sorted. Park's going to take over the world if we continue the way he is. Jane, when you talked about Apple's Jade, what, you know, perhaps apart from Walk in the Park, what, what was jumping out at you as a potential uh, mating? Well, first of all, I, I think Apple's Jade for me is, uh, from, from my lifetime, she's my favourite uh, race mare because what she did from two to three miles, there was no excuse with her. There was nobody complaining about ground. There was no excuses post-race with her. She was so hardened and tough. And you can see that through her family. They don't just win or win a little bit of black type. There's seven wins. There's 11 wins. The family is obviously very sound. This mare from two to three miles won 11 grade ones. And uh, just something I don't have any problem with is inbreeding. And inbreeding with Sadler as well has been proven to be absolutely fine uh, in, in recent years. So she has a sister. Uh, a a three-part sister by Montmartre. So that's the Manja line. I knew the mayor was in full to walk in the park, but I, I actually think it's, it's absolutely the right thing to do. So you can see uh, Greasy Apples there is the, is the sister I'm on about. And look, it's, it's inbreeding tree by tree to Sadler as well, but we've seen that work before with Tillis Moore and, and Innescoffy Oscar. I think Augusta Kate and Footpad were even closer, tree by two or two by three. Um, I'm sure... If somebody had this mare in the morning, you'd be, you'd be tempted to go to maybe a completely different route like Saint the Saint or Dr. Dino. But I think Walk in the Park is his first crop of Irish bred four-year-olds are going to run in 2021. And as Eddie suggested, I think what he has done to produce two superstars from Slim Pickens, I think this horse is going to take off. And just on the half sister as well, I think the Manjo line is the way I go with her. She was a superstar. So whatever she does in the future is a bonus. But I loved how tough and genuine she was. And some people might think they're back in school hearing you say three by two and three times three and think, what the hell are you talking about? Could you just maybe explain yeah. just nice and clearly for people, just so that they understand what that is, why, why it's important when you talk about Apple Jane? Yeah, so it's the great grandparents on either side. So when you have Apple's Jade on the bottom line, you'll have Sadler Maker as the grandparent on the maternal side to the existing foal. Sadler's Wells will be the third step back on that pedigree. And on the top line, you'll have Walk in the Park, Manja, Sadler's Wells will also be the third step back. So he'll be the great grandfather on both the maternal and paternal side. But we have seen in recent years that that has worked even with Enable Who's bred? Is it three by two or two by three? She's bred three by two, three by two. Um, and Peter, I suppose we with some great suggestions in the homework. You know, so I'm looking for an outcross. Patrick Fennessy, Blue Brazil, Lu Louisa Regan, Getaway, Ed Priest, and good old Fennensfort. You know, with a lot of different suggestions. I suppose for you, when you sat down and looked at this pedigree, what was it? What jumped out for you? What what stallion were you thinking about? Well, you know, as I say, she's, you know, Sadler's, my Sadler maker by, is by Sadler's Wells. Um, Sadler's Wells, what a, you know, what a wonderful sire, what a wonderful broodmare sire. Sadler maker hasn't much of a, a record as a broodmare sire yet. But um, I, I did notice, you know, there was, you know, obviously, you know, Sadler's Wells crosses very well with, with Dane Hill um, line uh, stallions. Um, you know, both as a, you know, broodmare sire and as a stallion himself, crossing with uh, Dane Hill mares. Um, so you could go that route. Um, but you know, the Dane Hill sire stallions in Ireland at the moment, um, are probably you know, you've got Westerner, but physically he probably wouldn't suit her because he's a you know, a handy horse himself, um, and she's not over big. Um, 
and if you so you know if you want to do so there isn't much proven jumping wise from the Dane Hill line other than Westerner. Um you've got that nice young horse um Hill Star who I've seen some nice horses by by Dane Hill Dancer. Uh, a horse actually we raced uh, um uh Qatar race was called Sumbal. He's a fine big good looking horse. Uh, he's a Dane Hill Dancer horse as well. Or you could go something like you know Master Craftsman who'd be a little bit you know you're going sort of he you know he can get dual purpose types so okay great and i suppose eddie when you think about i, I know apple's jade is kind of, kind of self-evident she she perhaps lost her enthusiasm somewhat but when you think about a national hunt mayor and you're thinking of the appropriate time to retire her when, when does that come into consideration is it just when you, you think they've had enough or is, is there sometimes do economics incentivize you to, to go a bit earlier or perhaps is the prize money so good you know you just, you just keep going until until they tell you I think Eddie might be frozen there, actually. James, we might turn... Apple's Jade. He's dreaming of Apple's Jade. He's trying to book as many nominations to walk in the park as he possibly can. Um, Jane, when, when you, think, you think about these good quality national hunt mares, you know, and you think about, think about racing them on, is it a case that they should just keep racing as long as they possibly can? Or what, what do you, when do you think is the appropriate time to cover them? Enthusiasm is everything. Uh, I, I think once they stop enjoying the game, um, if you are at that high caliber and enthusiasm is the reason why you retire, you've done very well to avoid injury and whatnot the whole way through. And when, I, when we had this, this brief of three brilliant mayors, I was trying to think of brilliant mayors of the past that have bred as good as themselves because the perception is that they don't, that Anna Glog's daughter didn't, that like a butterfly didn't, that um, Glen Carrig Lady didn't but I think going forward now it, particularly in Britain and Ireland when more mayors are racing um, that we'll have more proof going forward in the past a lot of mayors maybe if they were a sister to something if, they, if the pedigree was deep enough that the, the breeder just didn't even sell them that they just covered them they never got tested so going forward, I think with the, the scheme that's there and the program and opportunity for mayors, we'll have more evidence going forward to see if these mayors can breed what they run. Okay, great. Um, Eddie, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say Eddie, Jeff, yeah. that's, on that point, that's only happened in the last, in the last five or six years since the, since the scheme came in. Before that, you'd always see mayors with um, six, uh, eight folds of racing age, two winners, because nobody, nobody even broke the, the fillies. They were just covered and unraced. And that's why you see more and more being raced now. Eddie, we've over 208 people online at the moment and they're, they're listening to you at the moment and they're thinking about Apple's Jade and she perhaps lacks a bit of size or substance that you, you might think with a national hunt horse. When you look at mares and national hunt mares and you're trying to buy them, is, is size, a, a, how, how important a factor is it for you? Well, you... Um, we uh, we bought half a shade and she she had one of made hurdles. We bought her as a hurdler, and generally, if I buy if I, if I try to buy a, a, a national mare at a derby sale, I want a big I want a big gelding of a mare, like Shattered Love is a, and is what I would call the most perfect mare because she's like a big gelding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter, we had a suggestion from some of our, one of our friends, uh, friends Nicolas in uh, in France, and he's saying Saint de Saint is the best in Europe. He's, he says forget walking the park, and he's he's proposing a outcross with Saint de Saint. When when you look at the uh, uh, French stallions, would he be one that jumps out for you for Apple Street? Oh sure, absolutely. I mean, he's the, one of the outstanding, if not the outstanding um, sire in France at the moment. So and it has been. Um, but, I thought he was um, dead. You're 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 speaking you're speaking to three you're speaking to three Irish Irish people, and uh, we're going to uh, we're going to promote. We think we've got some wonderful stallions in this country, and and we're going to promote them. Um, but the uh, I suppose the important thing is now to actually put to everyone on online as to, as to what they think will uh, we should read it to. We've heard from our three experts. So what we've done, we've put a list of the um. 10 most popular uh, stallions that were proposed by uh, the people on, in their homework. 
Um, here is the poll. I'm launching it now. So you can vote on your, who you would breed apple jade to. So we have an early leader that's quite convincingly pulling clear. And that is they agree with Eddie O'Leary's judgment. They're, going, they're also going with Walk in the Park. Um, getaway with a stallion we didn't touch upon, but I'm sure we'll touch upon later. He was second on 16%. So I'll share those results with everyone. There you have it. Walk in the Park, 36% uh, of the vote for Walk in the Park. Okay, next, so Honeysuckle. So Honeysuckle, um, of course, very close to Peter Maloney's heart with some great suggestions of matings for her. You had Brendan Hoare, he gave a, a big suggestion to Capguard, Katie Dore, she said Nathaniel and Kenny Alexander himself, he actually said walk in the park. So perhaps this is all a little bit uh, uh, pointless if he already say, putting the foot down and we said we're going to walk in the park. But here we are. We have bought her. We have wrestled her from uh, Kenny's arms and we're here to mate her. And if you look at her pedigree, uh, Peter, I suppose it wouldn't jump out at you as the biggest page in the world. No, I mean, that was... To be honest, she was recommended to me when I went to the punch stand sale. She was in the catalogue and she was recommended to me from her uh, when her point to point. And uh, initially I said to Henry de Bromhead, uh, listen, the pedigree's not good enough. You know, it's a it's a bit of it's a fairly obscure German pedigree. Um, but then we saw physically and then, you know, kept, I, I think I must have watched the race about 10 times. Um, obviously fell in love with her. I mean, what we do, what I would love is, you know, she's by Suleimani, who's by Hernando, and uh, Hernando is a very good um, broodmare sire. Um, and uh, so that would be, you know, as a future broodmare, that would certainly be a, be a, a huge positive for, us, for me. And Eddie, you also, of course, had success with, with Suleimani, but uh, owning a Grand National winner, uh, or buying a Grand National winner by him. But... I suppose he's an, another evidence of a national hunt stallion that you know you wouldn't jump out as the, the top tier, but they could really produce racehorses at the same time if they have the right physical. Yeah, I, I could bet right, but um, like he, he's, he's actually quite a good Samuel, but they were late, late maturers. Um, it just shows a fair use to Peter because like, this mare when he bought had no pedigree, and um, but it just shows that a jumping a jumper a jumping horse the physical is, is worth more than the pedigree. But this this honey so this mare honeysuckle is a very 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 good racer. And at the benefit, at the benefit, she's actually very easy to cover because she's free of she's free of any kind of blood, so you can cover anywhere. But she's a very very good mare. We just showed they can come from any kind of pedigree. And Jane, if honeysuckle was to come down to you and the pedigree was to put be put in front of you by a national hunt breeder, like what what would be your opening suggestions in terms of potential um, matings for her? Well, the first thing that hits you is she's free from all saddlers as well as blood. So as Eddie said, she's quite, you know, you have a broad spectrum of stallions that you can use. Uh, it's a fast family. The, the dam, while she was listed, placed over hurdles, she, she won a maiden as a three-year-old over a mile in Germany. And that's something that you don't get an offer with a national hunt mare to play with. And just looking a little bit deeper, actually, saddler maker is the same. Suleimani... The dam sire Suleimani is um, is alleged, and that is something I I'd really love to see in a family. Um, again, with these three mares, their particular sire are all unproven as dam sires, so we can't just lazily sit here and say Suleimani works with X because it's produced Y. Uh, but I will say that Lando is actually the dam sire of um, Far. Heartbreak City and Far. So there's there's a lot of speed coming from various spectrums of this family. Um, I I just wanted to give her the champion sire in Ireland. So I thought Milan would suit her perfectly. I think when Milan started off, we bred to him very early on here because he's a very good looking horse. And um, we thought they were going to be quick. He got Darlan, he got Jesse fairly quick off the bat. But now... It seems that he can get you anything. He obviously nearly won the Gold Cup here this year with Santini. Manali is very good over fences as well. So I think Milan is, he's obviously a champion sire, but he's one of those sires that is an all-around stallion that can, that can just work for you. And while this mare is obviously an Irish champion hurdle winner, she loads of pace. I think...
to break up there a little bit. I think Jane might have just broken up a little bit. But I suppose um, when we turn to you, Peter, because you're the man that put up your hand and said, I want to buy this horse at the Goffs uh, Punches Town sale. And I, you touched upon earlier how you're trying to buy some four mares. What, but at the same time, like you had the judgment to say this could be, you know, what, what, what she is, which is a complete champion for Kenny Alexander. What was it that you were pitching it to her beyond the recommendation that you liked about her that was saying this could be one? Was there something in the video when you watched her performances? What, what was the thing that you liked about uh, Honeysuckle? Oh, sure. Listen, well, as a physical, she's a lovely mare. She lacked maybe, a, if you're going to be critical, she lacks a little bit of substance. Um, but she's a fine, tall mare, she's 16, two, scopy mare, and a beautiful mover. So physically, as Ezzy says, with you know the jumpers, physical is everything, and physically she's she's lovely. Um, um, but it was just her sheer dominance, dominant performance in point of point. I mean, she was incredibly impressive. I mean, it was, you know, and it has been, and I know it's easy, it's easy to. Um, to look back now with hindsight, but people said, you know, you know, everyone was in agreement that it was probably the best mayor's point to point of the year, you know. So, it, and obviously, it's proven to be so. <laughs> and, and Eddie, I might, I might touch upon the, the uh, Keno Sullivan just asked a question. He said, Walk in the Park ran over hurdles in his last race. We'll, we'll touch upon Benny de Dune, the next uh, pedigree, her stallion, great pretender. He won over hurdles. Is that something you've any interest at all in, or is it something that you would write off that the stallion itself has actually shown um, an ability to run over hurdles? I think it it would be a, from a jump point of view, it would it would have been a huge addition to a horse. That that horse that was that was killed in the Triumph last year with uh, Sir Eric, he would have been yeah. a lovely, lovely, lovely jumping stallion because a magnificent horse and he had everything going for him. And I'm not pissed that happened. But um, I would have thought that there was horse this year that that that, that could have done the same thing for them, but. I would think it'd be all, all a plus, but that's going on the French route and it'll take more and more time before we get horses who have run up. I think the nickname, nickname won, won, won chase. He did, yeah. He did, yeah. So like, like it, it can happen and it's probably not a bad thing, but we're, we're too probably ruled by the, the champions at the flat. Like when you see the likes of Chris and Gazing going straight to a jumping stud, like it just shows what the level you have to be to be, to be a jumping horse in Ireland because like they get away with murder in France. But they're, but they're covering the good eight, covering the good eight QPS mares, which is probably a big addition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and and you touched upon AQPS. Uh, you know, there'll be people online at the moment; they won't understand what that is. Uh, in simple terms, Eddie, what is AQPS? It's it's something different to a thoroughbred. It's something different. We used to have them over here years ago, and we used to call it the sixth. They had to call it something the sixth to run. They were they were non thoroughbreds. They, they were they were thoroughbreds, but they were they weren't from a they weren't hundred percent thoroughbreds. And they're a great, strong, tough animal, and there's a, they're kind of sort of like an outcross. Mm -hmm. So that the, 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 but the French AQPS horses are very, very good. But as a side from that, like like if you have one, it can't go to America. You can't sell it mm -hmm. because it, mm -hmm. they can't they can't race in some in some jurisdictions. But they're a very, very good, tough, honest breed. And but but the, like it just shows that uh, what we would think bad sires work in France when they get a hold of these of these AQPS mares. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Eddie, when you're thinking about honeysuckle, you know what? What would you think in terms of a mating? And you can't say walk in the park. We need. We need. No, 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 no. I don't know. No, I, I, listen. I, I'd be all with changing up here. Um, I do believe we have to stick with for, for young mares, proven sires. Yeah. But I love. There's a sire I love. I know it's a slow burner. But I think Yates is a hell of a good sire, and I wouldn't mm -hmm. mind seeing Yates up on the likes of honeysuckle. But uh, like as a young sire, going that the, there's Ockavango, um, who's shown to be all the right signs. Fine, big, strong horse too. Um, there's not a horse there that, that, that we've a lot of luck as Diane up in um, Sunny Hill. We've had a couple of good, very, very good Diane's. He's a fine, big, strong horse as well, you know. Okay, great. And Peter, we've heard that Kenny has submitted his homework and he's telling us walk in the park is the pick for him. Would you be wrestling his arm to go anywhere else? Well, listen, he's a huge, he's a huge fan of walk in the park and I can, uh, and I, we have a few mares in Fulton already this year. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to um, throw out a curveball altogether. You said we have unlimited money here, so and it's yeah, dream yeah. stuff. So um, Hernando Mares um, and seem to cross very well with Sea of the Stars. So you've got Sea of Class. Um, so let's go to Sea of the Stars with her. Um, okay. I mean, alternatively, you've got Crystal Ocean there. 
um, see the moon if you want to go down that route. But that's something completely, you know. Uh, well, why different. spend you eight grand on money. Crystal Ocean? Why spend eight grand on Crystal Ocean if we could spend a hundred and fifty grand on going to see the stars? I, I, I totally agree. I totally you did agree. Say unlimited budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's all good. I'm sure. <laughs> Kenny better raid that piggy bank for uh, for see the stars. But Jane, yeah. I, we talked about AKPS with um, uh, um, Eddie, and we talked about unlimited budgets with Peter. I'm interested. I, am I correct me if I'm wrong? But did did Room Room Mag go to Galileo? Yeah, that's correct. Room Room Mag and Annie Power. Um, sure, why not? When you when you when you own the mayor, um, and look, it'll be interesting to see what that what that produces. And I, I'd also emphasize to anybody who is breeding, like there are stallions. It's a long. It's not like the flat. National Hunt stallions have to take four or five years before they can prove themselves. And I know a lot of horses come to Britain and Ireland from France, like Shalikov uh, came over to Rat Barry on the strength of Don Cossack. And it maybe wasn't until this year when Shishkin pointed his toe that, that people realized, geez, Sh- Sh- Shalikov was a good sire. And, and, and very often by the time he comes back around, the stallion is almost even dead, you know, too old or dead. Mm-hmm. I think Shiraco is one of those sires as well. He came over here again to Rat Barry on the strength of of any power and he had his first Irish crop runners as five-year-olds in 2020 and they did really well so I think walking the park is going to be another example of that next year when they hit the ground as as the Irish crop breeder four-year-olds next year and sold your fortune as well so while they, they come to Britain and Ireland they, they get imported for good reason very often so just don't be caught on the hop if they're you know when their Irish crop do start to run and Honeysuckle, your thoughts, where would you say? So we said we've heard two contrasting choices so far. Yeah, I, I'm, I got cut off earlier because my Wi-Fi is so strong down here in Cork. Um, I thought about giving her the champion sire in Ireland because she's completely free of saddle as well as blood. And I think Milan is the all-around stallion that can get you a Jeski to win a champion hurdle to get you a Santini to nearly win a gold cup. Mona Lee, Darlan, and, and countless others in between. So I thought of a Sadler as well as Lion Horse. We'd used Walk in the Park. I considered Shalikov, but I think Milan is the champion sire in Ireland, and he's that way for a reason. Okay, and that follows Eddie's thoughts that you need something proven for a young mare like this. So we're going to again look to do our polling. So this is our next poll, and this is going to make Honeysuckle. Are we going to listen to the owner? Or are we going to do something entirely different? So here's the voting. An early lead for Jane Mangan's sele- selection, Milan. Yeah, Crystal Ocean doing very well. These are all the top 10 choices that people submitted their homework. 128 different pieces of homework. How come Yates, how come Yates stopped the list? Um, Eddie because they didn't, you didn't submit homework and it didn't reach the, the list. And as a result of that, here we have it. Milan has, is, is the winner. Jane Mangan's successful. See the Stars, unfortunately, also did not make the list, although um, I don't think the, um, the um, Giltown would like him to have made that list. So uh, let's... We do have, we do have Harzand and Crystal Ocean there, which yeah, we do, is we do, of my we, thinking. We're, so. yeah, we're, we're, allowed to, yeah, we're allowed little deviations, but perhaps not yeah. the big dogs. Okay, we're right. We'll move on to our next one. And why, why, is, why, is, why is Australia the list? I don't know. Why Australia? I've seen a few mares in Colt Australia. Jane Mangan, have you seen the same? Have I, I seen think. what, sorry? Uh, some National Hunt mares in Colt Australia. I've, I've seen one or two in certain sales. I don't know. I Camelia de Cotte went through a Christmas in Colt, did she? Yeah, and sort of Limony. Um, but anyway, we won't dwell on that too much. Still a good flat stallion. And, he's he's uh, still a good flat stallion and, sh- and shouldn't be covering yeah. jumping mares. No, I, I uh, yes, and as someone selling one, I might um, uh, hesitate to agree, but um, he is a very good flat stallion as well, gets a good classy animal. But here's Benny to do uh, a daughter, great pretender, and great pretender, as we touched upon, is a uh, again, we've we've two French bred mares here, Peter Maloney, and they're both by um, Sadra as well as Lion Horses. Is there any way to avoid it like you did and uh, and buy a nice Suleimani? It's it, it's Sadra as well as blood is everywhere, and uh. Um, Harold Fowler, as he asked me to refer to himself, said to me, he wanted to know your opinion 
which was how close would you breed a mare that it has sadder as well would, would you be happy to do three times two or is that too close for you Personally, well, it's actually hey, H.A. Rolls. That's what we call it. H.A. Rolls, that's it. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I read it for differently there in the email. <laughs> exactly. to me, but he was very keen to get your view. He was very keen to get your view. Yeah. Personally, I wouldn't really like to go closer than three by three. That would be my, my um, has always been my rule. Um, and I know as you were on your first week there, you were talking about an Abel who was closer than that. Um, but um, yeah, personally, I'd, I'd I'd like to go that way, and that's you know, listen, Sadler's Wells is all pervasive for a reason. He's a wonder, he's been a wonderful sire. Um, but there's you know nowadays you know you've got the Monson, lot of lovely Monson horses there. Um, you know the, the 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 leading studs have been you know really conscious of broadening out the. Um, the the uh, the selection you know so it's not there's not only just setters well as horses there uh, and we might touch, Jane you might touch upon the outcross op- options available in Ireland like I think of Kill Barry and I think of uh, Diamond Boy who's been so popular um I think of Getaway you know what what highlights would you pick in the Irish market of of outcross options yeah, yeah I, think I mean I, I'd like to go back with well, Jane actually I agree Jane with Jane I've mean, always been a huge fan of Scirocco. Um he went off uh, he's from Monson he went off the boil um, commercially for some reason I just couldn't believe it I mean sort of any power and sort of classic winners on the flat and uh, anyway he's proven to come back you know this year he has had a, he's had a wonderful winter this year um, I really I really like him <clears throat> um, Rathbury have a have a good Selection of outcrosses there, you know, the Malinas is a Lama Taz horse, Blue Brazil by Smadoon. So they have a they have a pretty good uh, um, jet away in um, Wexford. Uh, he's Cape Cross horse. He's um, he's uh, had some nice nice runners this year. Point point to point. He makes he makes, but, he makes terrible physical. Does he? Terrible. Like, even those point to point winners were horrors, and they made nothing at the sales. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And Eddie, I suppose we're, we're talking about sales. You know, Ross Miller has submitted a question. I think your best answer is that when you're buying a store, what's your biggest frustration with vendors? What What do you want from vendors? <laughs> a horse, a racehorse. They want deference. Deference. No, a race, a racehorse, a racehorse. Okay. Okay. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Simple. And Jane, Benny, did the, back to the uh, pedigree in question. You know, what, what are your kind of reflections when you look at this page? Uh, well, I love Benny the Joe, star mare. But in my head, I have her as a star stare. I think the performance of her career was last May when she went to Otoy, uh, three mile one, and beat De Boncourt, who I am also in awe of, brilliant mare in France, and beat her six lengths comfortably. So the Benny de Joe has stamina in abundance and is it hardly surprising considering she's by Grey Pretender who is a, a National Hunt racehorse out of a Robin de Champmere who is a National Hunt racehorse out of Cajadal. Cajadal for me is one of the greatest positive influences in the modern day National Hunt breed. I'm not 150 years old. I can't go back that far but to me Cajadal features in an awful lot of very good pedigrees. So that is... That's what jumps out to me, that this mare needs a little bit of pace. Um, I was thinking along the Monson lines, as Peter was saying, I was thinking uh, Getaway, Scirocco, Maxios. Um, you were asking about Monson or other outcross options um, around the country. I think the young first crop runners, sires, this year got a wicked short straw. Ocavango, Getaway, Leading Light, Rule of Law. There's so many more of them that never got an opportunity to prove themselves. And had there been racing continuously to now we might be considering one of them um poets word success days there's a lot of other outcross options but as benny de Joe is a star i'm going to give her the i think the best son of monson in the country and i think getaway is the heir apparent to to the champion sire crown i just think when these horses uh, get over fences the likes of the big getaway uh, the big breakaway and so many more i think this horse is the real deal Okay, great. Well, we had some other suggestions from homework. Ellen Gibson said, uh, walk in the park. Alejandro Suarez um, said, scorpion. 
But Eddie, when you looked at Benny Dejeu, what, what jumped out for you as a potential mate? Of the three mares involved, she's a fine, big, good-looking mare. So like, she could take any kind of a horse and I would, I would only physically improve him. And like, I know we're going against it, like he's a young sire, but he's, he's done very well with his, with his few, relatively few runners. His shows are fortune. And she could take him by in Southern Galileo because she's a fine, big mare herself. But um, at that hour, like, 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 he's, I, I nearly go for Soldier of Fortune, but he's probably not going to be your list for a vote, though. He's, he's not, he's not. But yep. this is, this is, uh, I don't know how you did in school, Eddie, if you're not submitting homework, you know. It's a, it's a, a, was, a, a, a desperate struggle to... to that was, like, was a problem in school, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I suppose, Peter, we'll turn back to you. Benny, did you, what, what, what was your suggestion? Are you going to go for an outcross again? Yeah, I think I would. And um, I just noticed the question coming up there and he's yeah. a horse I've used and we're going against the Proven Stallion thing again. But there's a horse I really like, a Monson horse, a lovely quality horse, gorgeous looking horse himself and got lovely quality foals. I think he'd suit Benny did it beautifully and that's Vadimos. Okay, very interesting. And unproven stallions in the market, you know, I think we, we might be going into a bit more of a difficult period. What would your advice be for uh, breeders when they look at unproven stallions and trying to find the right ones for them? Oh, I think, I think it's very difficult in the first crop, you know, but when you see the foals on the ground and they've got a good, you know, a nice crop of horses, you know, it was like in the old days, presentings or strong gales, like one after the other, they were all gorgeous looking horses. You know, Flemings Furts were all peas in a pod. Once you see them on the ground, and if you see, you know, you see that, and you've got those lovely crops to run for you, then, uh, you know, and you'll see them sell well at the sales. You know, those horses that are consistently getting good looking, good looking stock. It's, you know, as if, going back to what Eddie said earlier, jumping, it's all about the individual, the, you know, well conformed horse, good mover. Okay, great. Well, we have to select what we're going to breed Benny to. So I am going to stop sharing our last results and I'm going to show you our next panel. Soldier of Fortune, of course, not there. Vadimos, not there. But Jane Mangan, can she do the double? Am um, I is... just basically a home run here? Yeah, Can't I don't know. Even if I finish I second know. or third. <laughs> well, not initially, actually. They're looking at other options. So let's see. Okay, very, actually, very across the board. Camelot, I don't know what he's doing on that list. He's, uh, uh, he's doing quite well. But, and we're going to end it there. I can't believe it. Getaway made a late surge. <laughs> That's Getaway the got, foot that they'll Getaway, have in the last yeah, two look, Getaway got the inside uh, of, uh, there, while well, Benny didn't at Cheltenham. But uh, Getaway got, got up on the line and, and it did it all. So he is our select 21 votes for him, 20% to the vote. So that's great. Benny de de goes to getaway. Okay, great. Now we have a Q&A function. You'll see that at the um, top of your screen or the bottom of your screen. And I'd like to open up and we'll, as we've been doing throughout, any questions you may have for Eddie, and for Jane and for Peter. Um, so let's have a look what people have said. I suppose there's been no mention for Flemingsford. Flemingsford, born in, I think it was 1992. Jane, reflections on his influence on the breed. You know, we're kind of a changing of the guard period in National Hunt Stallions at the moment, but he's been a remarkable stallion. A remarkable stallion that had a consistency and variety that very few stallions ever achieve. I think himself, Montelimar and Chantou are the, the main three son of alleges that, that, that stick out to me. But how often do you have a, a sire that can that can give you relegate and total enjoyment to win a, a champion bumper, or give you Imperial Commander to win a Gold Cup, Tidal Bay to win an Arco. So many different trips and, and maybe soft ground is, is the only thing they were a little bit reliant on. I just thought that the alleged line, Shantou and Flemish, they gave you, they give you a toughness that, that a lot of the modern stallions might not have. And, and I would totally take that into account when you are breeding your mare you want a good sound horse and if they if, invariably look if they have talent great but if they don't have the wheels to carry it that's no good to nobody okay great and there's a question for you eddie and that, that's your reflections of what the market might be like you know we're going through a bit of a strange period at the moment we look forward to the store sales coming up in the during the summer 
how do you feel they'll go? We'll have to see when, when we can get out of this, 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 not, this non-racing lockdown carry on and how long it lasts and what, 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 uh, what, in what state our economy is when this is all over. But um, like the people, people hopefully, it's, it's a very resilient industry and people hopefully want to race. And uh, listen, it, it'll be very tricky times for the, for the next 12 months, we have to see. Okay, okay, great. Well, I suppose we're looking at, a lot of people are trying to remain optimistic and uh, actually live as we speak, Harry Fowler has returned with another question and he's emailed it to me just now. And his question is this, and Peter, I, does, he's kind of, he, has, he seems to have an obsession with you. So we may turn to you for this question. And that's your thoughts about mayors that tend to make the stallion. Surely, uh, this, surely the mayors have made Milan. And surely if a top class uh, uh, and upgrades his mayors, he should get many top fillies too. How many top fillies has Milan had? So he's, uh, it's a, um, he's asking about the influence of Milan there. So what's your thoughts on Milan? Um, oh, I love Milan. Um, actually, I gave an awful lot of money for a Milan foal this year. Uh, Philly, Philly foal. Um, she was an absolute beauty. Um, and I'd be a huge fan. Absolutely huge fan. Jane might be better at answering. She has, she had a good filly of Nikki Henderson's this year. Uh, Jane, what was that? Uh, you're catching me on the hop now, Peter. Yeah, the yeah. first one that springs <laughs> to mind, I actually bred Carrig Millie, uh, sister to oh, Strong yeah. Flow, who was, I think, his first black type mare. And yeah, that, that is a valid uh, observation. People have been saying that, but I think through opportunity, as you say, Milan has got plenty of talented fillies. Off the top of my head now, the computer isn't really up to scratch, particularly because I haven't been watching racing in the last seven or eight weeks. So <laughs> they're, they're, they're there. Don't get me wrong, they're there. But Carrie Milley is the only one that springs to my mind at the moment. And, and Eddie, you touched upon it, and Harry Fowler has asked a question um, as well about Crystal Ocean and Crystal Ocean. Sons of Sea to Stars, their future as National Hunt. You know, we've seen the influence that Galileo has had in the National Hunt breed and we've seen before him, Sandra as well. But, you know, turning to Galileo's brother, Sea to the Stars, Cape Cross, is that a worry there? Or would you be excited about Crystal Ocean going into the future? I'd be very excited about, about Crystal Ocean um, going forward. Because they got a Cape Cross, even with, even with Jetway, like they have ability. But um, uh, like for, for a horse of, of his quality and standard to go straight jumping was a massive statement. Uh, and Eddie, we've seen in the um, uh, in the United States this week big news that perhaps isn't getting the amount of uh, coverage that it would ordinarily in a more normal uh, period of racing. But that's that, that they've limited crops to 140 mares, um, which is, it seems a kind of remarkable thing to do, and it would be a remarkable thing to happen in the Irish industry. Would you ever see that happening? The day when stallions are limited to 140 mares. I'd say, I, listen, I, I, know, I know it would be very, the Stanley men wouldn't want to see it, but uh, like when I started this game, they covered 40. Mm -hmm. now, it's, now it's 140. You know, so like, like it's still a very busy Stanley at 140. So I don't know if, if it carries through for jumpers. I think it's only horse were born this year. That it, that, so it, it, it won't kick in for, for, another, for, another, for another four or five years. Okay, okay, great. It does, it does, the way it's structured, I think, is that it's only horses born this year in America. And of course, it'll take a long time, or well, uh, next year, in fact, but it'll take a long time, of course, for that filter to, to true into the breeds and the stallions. But it's going to be very interesting to watch over the next while. Um, we've touched upon Crystal Ocean. Um, is there, uh, Jane, is there any other kind of value, Cyrus? You know, we have National Hunt breeders, I'm sure, watching at the moment, and they're kind of thinking, what can I do at a bargain basement level? You know, are there stallions there that are underrated by the market that they could get a bit of bang for their book? I think, and uh, I might be slaughtered for saying this, I think National Hunt breeders have as high a standard as anybody in this industry. For the vast majority, the stallions that retire to stud, National Hunt Stud in Ireland are almost all group one winners or they're they're a very high class stallion and if they're not group one winners they're very well bred for they're standing for a reason to have the likes of poets word and crystal ocean stand in ireland i think they both are hugely exciting and um, both bow crosses obviously from saddler as well but where you see on the flat where a horse maybe is precocious and he stands based on his precocity despite the fact that he wasn't proven at group one level that doesn't cut it on the jumping sphere because the competition is too high throughout the country 
Um, we're down here in the thick of it in Munster where we have huge studs all around. And if you want to stand out, you have to either offer something different or, or have a real top, top class racehorse. So with the market of middle distance horses going to Australia, it's obviously very difficult for national hunt studs to get their hands on, on, a, on a particularly high class horse. But if you are looking for value, often it pays to look for something different. And I think as soon as see the stars uh, and, and poets word and even success days, the son of Jeremy down in Kilbarry, they all offer something a little bit different. Monson is obviously proven to be a very, very good influence. And there isn't that many of them in Ireland. I think Maxios was a great addition and Akavango will get a, a ch an opportunity to prove himself. Um, I actually, Eddie mightn't like Jetaway. I, I'm a fan of Jetaway. I think he, for the, for the quality of mare he covered, uh, Owen Banville has done his, his best with him. I think he's a horse that's going to go, I think he's going to soar. I think he's going to be very good. And I hope for, for the stud that he's standing in that he is. Okay, great. And I suppose, Peter, a question for you. And uh, it's one that a number of different individuals have asked um, as we uh, kind of submit questions online here. And that's dam sires. Are there particular, dam, like we see Robin Deschamps, Robin Deschamps is the broodmare sire of Benny de Bacardi's. You know, there's a recurring team of sometimes the national hunt horses that good broodmare sires have a real influence. Are there ones when you flick through your catalogue at home, the derby sales out, are there dam sires that you kind of go, wow, that's one I, I, I really, really like? Yeah, I love, well, I love a King's Theatre mare is, is one. Uh, presenting mares, um, Flemings for its mares, you know. Listen, all those, all those uh, really successful stallions, uh, established national hunt sires, um, they've all got good mares to come to them, you know, with mares with good pedigrees. And uh, that obviously gives them a huge advantage, you know, they've got that backup of the pedigree behind them. Um, but, you know, I would, I'd be a huge fan of uh, King's Theatre at the moment. The King's Theatre mares, I'd love them. Uh, Bob Mac mares as well, I like them very much. And Eddie, a question for you from PT, and he wanted to know all your success over the years, buying so many, you know, great racehorses, kind of your own critique of yourself. How much of that is, you know, looking at the physical, thinking about the horse, and how much is, do you need luck along the way? How, how, how do you kind of balance it all up? If you had to put it in percentage terms. Oh, you, you, need, you, you need a very, very nice horse. Uh, and just go back to the last point, I think actually um, um, dam sires and grand dam sires are actually more important than what's on the page. I'd rather, I'd yeah. rather a, white, a white page, but give, but give me a strong gate, a king's ride, give me a, a proper, proper jumping mares rather than what's on so the what page. Other da what other dam sires do you like seeing? Do you kind of echo King's Theatre? Oh, I would, yeah, give it like Bob Back, King's Theatre, like proper king's ride, Strong Gale, all those great old sirs. Like the, the it, it, you, you want balls in a, in in a dam sir. Like just something that can give you a toughness. Okay, That's balls, surely quote of the day. Balls, you want balls, balls in a dam sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, delighted, I'm delighted that we have secured our headline and we did it with only just over five minutes left. Thank you for that, Eddie. Yeah. Um, but, no, seriously, uh, see, it's it's where the toughness comes from. You, you want toughness yeah. in your in your in your sirs. And kind of extending that, because there'll be a lot of people watching, you know, we've 218 at the moment watching online, and they're thinking, you know, they might be thinking, I wouldn't mind, you know, I've seen what the ITBA have done, I've seen what the Turbo Breeders Association are doing in the UK, about supporting bears, and I want to buy a mare of my own come in the coming sales season, and they, I'm sure they would be more than welcome to do so. It, 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 would you be advising them to really focus in on the stallion? Is that something, if you're talking about dam sires looking into the future, is that something you'd, you'd give them in terms of your advice? I just, I, to, to be honest, it, it, if you want to buy something to race, I go the, the individual first every time, mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and 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 buy try and get the the, the sire will get by the individual first. The sire, what she's buy will, will will bracket her for for her price, but buy the individual first if you want to race her. Okay, great, great. Okay, so we've uh, covered a lot of ground, and I think Jane, if we were kind of to, to loop it all in, and you know, people are thinking about reflecting upon how they breed national hunt mares and how to breed the best ones. If you had to distill your advice into, you know, two or three things, what would be the key fundamentals when you breed national hunt racehorses? And tailor it to your mare. I am a firm believer that your mare is three quarters of the end product because she gives 50% of the genetics. 
she carries the embryo for 11 months and then she nurtures it for another five or six. So it's all well and good listening to a presenter such as myself on race day when things go right or wrong. And we invariably give credit or crit critique to the sire, but we're often doing that because we don't know enough about the dam or the dam to, to criticize her or to praise her. So I think the mayor is three quarters of it. And that is why going back to the start when I was saying the diversity of success at the Cheltenham Festival among sires, it's probably because of the, of the dam, you know, um, and we have mated in, in inverted commas, three star race mares, and hopefully they'll go on to produce what they could run. But if your mare is in the right environment and you tailor the physical to match your mare, you, you, you'll try and get size and scope. Uh, if you want to have a good jumper, you need to have size and scope, movement and everything after that. Uh, that's, that's my advice to anybody. See your mare, understand that she will have weaknesses as well as strengths. They're not all roses, but they might, they might breed you something if you, if you can get the mating right. Okay, great. And Peter, kind of building on what James is, in part, like kind of parting words of advice from you, what would you say? Um, well, listen, again, I'll go back to what Eddie said. It's all about the individual. It's all about the individual. It's all about the individual. And, um, but, you know, it depends very much if you're from the breeding side. If you're, if you're breeding commercially or you're breeding um, to race. And breeding commercially in the National Hunt game, Unfortunately, national hunt people, racing people, we don't, and that's, I include myself in it, we don't use our imaginations very much. Um, and it, the, the horse at the top of the page is what brings the people to the door. Um, so you really need to try to be using a, a commercial stallion. I mean, I think that's very important, which makes it difficult for, you know, people with their young horses and, um, and horses are trying to start off. But I mean, then you can, you know, think slightly outside the box. The last couple of years, Scirocco would have been outside the box for people, um, you know, but, and you would have got him for great value, you know. Um, so you can think outside the, little, the box a little bit, trying to use your, your imagination. But in general, if you're breeding as trying to breed commercially, doesn't pay to use your imagination too much in the national hunt game. Okay, great. And Eddie, I might get a bollocking if I don't give you the last word, so I'll endeavour to do so. And we've heard that mayor, dam stars need to have balls. We've heard breed an unproven mare to a proven stallion. And we've heard the importance of a physical. Is there anything else that you, we haven't covered that you would just impart to people that are listening in that you say, that's, some, that's a word of wisdom and something I would, I, I would uh, give as guidance to everyone watching in? I'd say, I'd say buy, the, buy the best physical you can um, with as much pedigree as you can afford. And more importantly, it's where, it's, it's where it goes with the, with the, trainer that is, the, the, the trainer that is vital to get you the resource and to bring it through. Okay, great. Well, uh, that's another thing we didn't touch upon. The incredible trainers that we have here in Ireland and that have done so well with National Hunt Mares and have done so well with these three mares in particular. That's it for this evening. Thank you very much for joining. If you have any feedback, please send to me. We'd love to make it better. Love to think how uh, we can help you learn a little bit more. Thank you very much to our three panelists. Um, hugely appreciate the giving up their time and participating. And uh, we'll all catch you again soon. So thank you again. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Jack. Cheers.